system so it's uh, not cooling quickly enough. Um, the milk's cold now, I'm assuming it's off. It's quite cool. Lost the phase, I expect that's off on its internal clicks, and if we're lucky. Check there's no power coming in. Um, and then we're going to take the uh, pull the wires out. Um, we've got a new contactor overloads, and I've got an auxiliary relay. We could auxiliary contact. We can put on the top to run the crankcase here because I think the crankcase here is on permanent with these. Um, we've got one of these screwdrivers. A tip on that is a uh, cross between um, a posi drive and a flat, and it fits in these screws that are a hybrid of um, neither one nor the other. Um, we've got, they do a different one, which is for Phillips. It's well worth getting a set of those if you do a lot of work on um, electrics. Oh, this needs two hands, I think. Alright, got the new contacts are wired in now. Um, got three phases in the top. Um, straight through through the overloads. And out the bottom. We'll have to check the rotation on the compressor. Well, we've kept the colours matched up, so as long as it was right last time, it should be okay. Um, control circuit is piggybacked off the black phase into here and then it starts off there, goes down to the pressure switches and then comes back up here to the overloads um, and on these overloads you can either use this terminal here and then run that round to the coil on the contactor um, or there's actually they actually do it internally there's a little wire that sticks out the back of the overloads and wires into the A2 connection down in between there um, and it saves you running a wire around, but it does mean you need to be very careful that you've got your neutral on A1 because um, your live is going on A2. Um, and generally, I used to wire live to A1 and neutral to A, um, A2. Um, and if you do that on these, um, you'll blow the overloads up because you've basically got a live short, a dead short between um, your control circuit and your neutral. But other than that, they've done a nice little um, uh, contactor set, really. There's Lovato. Um, buy them from Sparky Shop or RS Components. Um, 
actually badge them up as their own brand so they must be good enough um, for them to do that RS to put their name to them that's the old one I'll take that to bits in a minute that's the um, middle terminal <coughs> contact off the uh, contactor and the um, that middle one looks you probably won't be able to tell but it looks like it's bent up a bit that, that's just slides in there it's held in by the screw once you've got the screw in there and the wire but that doesn't quite that looks slightly higher than the other two so well, they all look hot they've gone the sort of dark colour they should be coppery coloured really same as that one on the end, that's the same, that's copper. That's my lockout kit. I'm not quite sure what the idea of this bag arrangement is, what you're meant to do with it. But... and things. Um, hang on a bit. Um, that one I think you can put a load of padlocks so you can have different people working on it and all lock it out. Um, that, that clamps onto a breaker. Uh, that's something else there. We've got some tags. You know, operate and the padlock. Mostly all I ever use is the padlock because most of the stuff I've got has got a isolator on it which is where I usually lock them off. That way I know the neutral's cut as well because I, I always put um, four pole isolator in there so you can cut the neutral. When it's off it's off. Right, that's, that's, that's all wired, so let's see what happens. the way that stopped and started again. Um, that might have something to do with the old contact for going. You could have a pressure switch that's not quite um, switching properly. But anyway that's confirmed the rotation. Um, the tank has been and collected his milk which is cold so we can't run the tank now because it's empty and it's on a wash cycle. Um, it's the only, only way we could run this now so I'd have to wait for the wash to finish and then put a couple of thousand litres of water in the tank. Um, well, probably a thousand litres in this one. Um, and give it something to work on. Or wait, wait until he's milking. But we, we had a similar current on all the three phases. On the black one, which is the one that we'd lost previously. Um, yeah, we might have a look at the um, pressure switch. See what that's... Um, switching out. Failing I've got some little delay timers, it wouldn't it wouldn't hurt to put a um, 20 second timer on there or something, maybe 30 seconds. Um, room enough in that box I think. Got some little subco timers. Um, yeah anyway we'll have a look at this I think. To the contact apart, and um, you can see they're not. So these sort of tabs aren't quite um, in a row. Um, they should be sprung loaded. So when this pulls in, um, it compresses that little spring, and the contacts can move up. 
but um, the middle one which is the black phase which we had a problem with is stuck and also that one there is stuck that end one you can see how that moves that just gives it enough room for the two halves of that to be able to meet when it's pulled down and then you can see the plastic sort of bubbled a bit there so it's just got very hot Yeah, so I could have been cycling on and off and do that. Could just be old age, so saying that the thing's seven years old. So. Right, we've got the line on the receiver, so we've got should have liquid there. We've got the line on the suction. We've got about 24 psi in the suction at the moment. What we'll do is we'll keep tweaking a bit in till that switch kicks in. Uh, that's the high side there, it's got a preset differential. Well, that's the low side. The cut in looks to be about 40 psi, and the diff looks to be about 30. So it should cut out around 10. Um, I mean it could have been there, there might have been oil in, in the capillary. Um, like a blob of oil in there. And um, I've had that, especially when it's been idle for a while. Um, you can get weak, you, you can just get in there anyway. Um, and that can upset where they switch. Um, kind of plugs the uh, line up. But, uh, let's see. This is 404, so we would need to be at minus um, 17 to have liquid actually in the compressor. By the time it's got in there, there's enough heat um, in the body of the compressor to boil off that little tiny bit we're putting in there. So. And if you left the taps full ball, uh, I think I heard the switch click then. Let's turn it on. Okay. Well, that went way too low. Um, Time for a new switch if we've got one on the van. If they've gone out of adjustment, they're not really worth playing with. Some it's worn inside there, the little mechanism um, has worn, the springs have gone weak, something's happened. Um, if it's gone out of adjustment, it's only going to get worse. So you can tweak them to get someone going again, but you need to be going back within a few days with a, a new control if it's been playing up. Um, It's not coming up at all. The other thing sometimes with these is when they when they pump down into um, vacuum, the scrolls can separate, and um, when they do that, you get a big rush of gas coming back through, which might have been what happened. It might have gone off just as that, you know. Um, if you run them down, sort of pretty much as far as this one was getting. Um, you hear them sort of whoosh, it sounds a bit like the air brakes on a truck um, and it's just the gas bleeding back up those scrolls because there's, there's not enough to keep them pushed together um, and that would send a sudden pulse of pressure back up the suction line which would could have, could have triggered that made it fire back up I'll have a bit more of a play with it
purely charge them, they can pump down and go off on the high pressure switch because the condenser's full up before the LP reaches KL. But um, I'll pump that down, we shut that valve, we can leave that high side volume into the suction. new pressure switch on there um, just got to check the, check its operation um, and leak, check for leaks around here something to be careful of when you put them on is um, how long these screws are um, you need to make sure they don't go through and foul on the workings inside because they could short out or stop it switching um, that's something to be aware of we've got this wired in blue and black onto A and C and that's our two controls here and here which are 8 and 9 and that's black and blue brown and grey are not used they were signal wires on the other one so you could have wired them up to light a light up if, it, if the pressure switch trips try and see We can turn that a bit higher. It's probably too high, it's going down a bit. Let's see where the cane is. Coming up, maybe the sun will shut. Maybe it's cooled the water down so it's had both, both the units running. It's just hot gas. Um, we're bleeding back. We have to be careful. You go to do too far open, it'll, it will get liquid from the condenser. about three bar, 45 pounds. I think it's roughly where it's cutting back in. There we go. Ten. I'm happy with that. This then comes back to up to the uh, 18 pounds, something like that, 16, 18 pounds. So we've got another nearly 20 pounds before it would, um, well, more than that, 25 pounds. Got them out of that with some leaks um, spray and we can't see any bubbles, so it's looking good.